Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to take a look at a category of functions called piecewise functions. Piecewise functions are functions that are defined in multiple pieces using different functions for different x values. So here, instead of being given one expression in terms of x that covers the entire domain, we've split our domain into different pieces and we're given a different expression of x for each piece. Now here in this ex example, I've got a piecewise function that only has two pieces. So if I kind of think about my number line from negative infinity to infinity, this one is broken into two pieces splitting at four. So for four and below, we are using the expression f of x or g of x equals three. For four not inclusive and above, we're using the expression x plus one. So we're breaking up the x values at four. Anything below x equals four, we're gonna use three as our y value. And anything above four, we're gonna use the expression x plus one. So let's evaluate some values. Let's see what we get. So g of negative two. So the first thing that we need to do is determine where does negative two fall? So here's four, negative two would be somewhere to the left or less than. So that means we're gonna use this piece of our function. So replacing all inputs with negative two, we get three. G of zero. Once again, we need to begin by determining which piece does zero fall into. So thinking about our number line, zero would be somewhere about here on the number line, which means that we would again be using this piece of our piecewise function. So G of zero would be three. Checking out our next one, g of four. Looking at where does four fall? In this case, four is very special because four is the connector point. So to determine which piece to use, we need to look for this or equal to symbol and we need to use the piece that has it. So in this case, we're gonna use again, the top piece, g of four equals three. And last but not least, g of seven. So taking a look at where seven falls on our number line, seven would fall somewhere over here. So we're now gonna use this second piece, since now we are above four, and get that g of seven says to replace all the x values with seven. So that's seven plus one or eight. So g of seven equals eight. So when you're working to evaluate piecewise functions, begin each expression by figuring out which piece of the function do you need to be working with. Now, another thing we might want to do with piecewise functions is we might want to graph them. So let's take a look at this g of x and figure out how can we graph this function. Well, really, all we need to do is graph each piece separately connecting at wherever they are defined or wherever the split is. So in this case, anywhere to the left of four, we're gonna graph g of x equals three. Now that's one of our parent or library functions. That's a constant function, which we know is a horizontal line at three. So I'm gonna go ahead and graph a horizontal line at three and I'm gonna stop when I get to x equals four. There we go. It extends forever to the left, but at four, I need to put some sort of dot there, either open or closed. Because g of x equals three has the or equal to piece, I'm gonna go ahead and put a closed dot there. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in 
and say my y value at 4 is 3. Okay, so that is one piece. Now to graph the right piece, we're going to graph the graph of x plus 1, but we're going to start the graph at 4. So if I were to replace 4 for x, 4 plus 1 tells me I'm going to begin at the point 4, 5. Now the type of dot I'm going to put there depends on whether or not we have an equal to symbol. Here we do not, so I'm going to put an open circle at the point 4, 5, and then I'm going to continue the graph to the right using the definition x plus 1. Well, this is a line that has a slope of 1, so from this point 4, 5, I can go rise 1, run 1, there's another point, rise 1, run 1, and I can go ahead and connect through and indicate that we extend to the right indefinitely. So there's how we graph this g of x piecewise function. In general, remember, just graph each piece separately. All right, guys, that does it for this video on piecewise functions. We'll catch you in the next one.